Hello everyone, back doing our top 10 of the year we do for books, movies, and video games. So we're going to go ahead with books. Um, we'll start with my number 10. We have Bewitched, The Opposite Uncle. Uh, it's really cool to have a collectible you know, Bewitched book from 1970. It's really just a an episode, an original episode of Bewitched in book form, and it written so it feels like it, and that's the hard thing to capture with TV show ones. That's why I enjoyed it, because I love Bewitched. Well, and that was hard to get, too. It was very hard to get. Right, actually, this is the second one, because the first one got lost in the mail, and then, so that was yeah, a beast to get. Eventually got it. My number 10 is The Witch's Daughter. This is historical fantasy, sci not sci-fi, fantasy, and it's just a fictional historical book. It was fairly good, but meh. When you're like, huh? Tango ones. Uh, my number nine is, I forgot just pick that one because I like the cover, the Everworld series. Um, I'll link down below if you've not watched. We did an entire video series on Everworld, like we did Goosebumps and stuff in the past. I really enjoyed these. Again, if I had read more of them as a kid, it'd be higher on my list, but then obviously it would be here if I'd read them all because this is stuff we read for the first time was here. Uh, but I really enjoyed them and definitely one that I. I feel like I missed out on a little bit not reading them as a middle school age mm -hmm. person. But yeah, we did a whole series on those for my number nine. Mm -hmm. Underappreciated series. Yes. My number nine is I actually watched the movie version of this first. And I like the book version better. This is. Uh, I remember you There's a about lot that. of problems with this, but it was enjoyable. It's called Spontaneous. It's when the kids blow up. Yes, it's yeah. when they, they spontaneously combust. Yeah. And it, it was really funny, really grotesque, just very violent and bloody, but really, really good. A lot of issues, like believability issues, but yeah. just a fun. Yeah. Uh, my number eight is the I Love Lucy book. Uh, I've read books about you know Lucille Ball's life. This is more specifically like mostly like I Love Lucy, and this was really cool because it really gave a lot of de super detailed information, like almost like textbook style from behind the scenes of the show, like a lot of dates and people on those in the back. It even has, you know, for like every single episode, like an original air date and things. So this was really a lot of fun to go through. My number eight is my only nonfiction book on the list, which I think is in your pile. It is a... The, oh, yes it is. I know what you're talking about. I think it is. Yes, it is my pile. I know what you're yes. talking about. Yes. Flint it is Flint Lab. That comes later in mine. It's James Randi's <laughs> book. Yeah. It was very good, but a little too dry for me. Mm -hmm. I know you're not going to agree with me. But it was it was interesting. And there's another one of his. We have three. There's one of his we're missing that I think you'll like. I'll read next year. But, but definitely an enjoyable book and very interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting perspective on all the things he talks about. Yeah, I all the, all the, that. the crooks and the shysters and things. Yeah. Uh, my number seven, Total Recall, my unbelievably true life story, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, this probably would have been a little bit higher had I not already read several biographies of his and like the first half of this was pretty much just from an earlier book of his that I had read but it was interesting to get this a much larger version goes further in his life than some of the ones I read because some of them uh, were published in like the 80s that I'd read and this is much later so this was fascinating and again just there's so much in here so lengthy and he just has no matter what you think about him he's had a very fascinating life. My number seven is The Moon and the Sun. This I want to watch the movie. I'm pretty sure the movie came out. Oh, a movie. With Pierce Brosnan. Oh, okay. Has different name. Bond. Yeah. yeah, Bond. And it's supposed to be not very good. Mm. But this was this was an interesting fantasy story about a mermaid. But it takes place in historical France. And I'm okay. not not a fan of the names. It's yeah. very confusing. Yeah. It's kind of historical because it uses actual people and fake people. So very interesting. Uh, my number six, uh, another biography, we have uh, Peter Falk, just one more thing, the great Columbo, and uh, not quite as informative as, say, like the Lucy book or the uh, Arnold book, but the style was so much more enjoyable to read, it was very humorous, like it's just really, really, it was a lot of fun, and still in informative, but just not quite as dry and textbooky feeling, so this was definitely a joy to read. My number six is embarrassing. But I understand why, it's and, um, really um, funny. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what it is, but I'm really embarrassed. No, because it's like Cause so it's bad. Really it's, it's like stupid. watching the room. It's so no, bad. No, but this yeah. is like this Worse. is really bad. Worse. This <laughs> no. is this is a fictional story. You have to put the quotations because this is not fictional. You just changed nouns. <laughs> this is the wig, the bitch, and the meltdown by Jay Manuel. <laughs> Shut up. America's Top Model. America's Next Top Model, which 
This is just like his life. Smirching it's, my Tyra. It's, this is hilarious. And he's such a bad writer that, I mean, I think most of this is true. I'm pretty sure most yeah. of this is true. And that. You just like could be laughing in the other room and like you'd read part of a paragraph and like that is like broken English and like makes no. Yeah, it, there's <laughs> grammatical issues. It's, there's, it's very, very bad, but uh, oh my gosh, I, you couldn't stop. Just, like it's just, just watching funny. a train wreck. Yeah. You just can't stop, but. Yeah. Really, really funny. Would not recommend it though. It's not That's a the thing. Good book. Like, it's, yeah, it's not a good book, but like you, you were in there just like cracking up. Like, it's it's it was, yeah. unbelievable. Uh, my number five is we already talked about James Randi, Boom Flam. I always love him. I've watched probably like twenty hours worth of his talks at you know and dresses at different colleges, and he's just fascinating. He's just talking about him taking on like con artists and talking all about you know the the idea of you know of getting into these things. It's fascinating. Like the the mindset of it all. So, really cool. My number five is a children's book, but I did not know it was a book until very recently. Yeah, and it's L. Frank Baum. This is L. Frank Baum, which is weird. Mm -hmm. um, it's The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. This was one of my favorite movies, mm -hmm. my favorite Christmas movie. Yeah, the Rankin Bass. Rankin Bass. Um, it's now in that collection mm -hmm. that we got, which is great because I don't think anybody else knows what that is. <laughs> But this is the book form that came first, and I love this mostly because it's nostalgic for me. Yeah, because the attachment to the movie. And it, it just, it's, it's just cool. My and it's just right bound. Like, I never even. So excited. Yeah. Uh, my number four uh, is one of the few Star Trek books I had not read before, but TOS The Starship Trap, uh, which all involves a mystery of disappearing ships and a misunderstanding, and the Klingons think the Federation has this new you know, super weapon and that they're the ones doing it, but it's actually ships from like all kinds of different. You know, races and organizations disappearing. It's just a, a fascinating, like, fun standalone. My number four I don't have anymore because I have slipped it on. It is the Bone Witch trilogy. Oh, yeah. Um, it's just a fantasy, I think it's young adult. Mm -hmm. It's like borderline, but it's a dark fantasy. But One of those fun, like, one time reads, though. Yeah. Like the J Manual. <laughs> well, a fun one time read. Yeah. Uh, my number three, we get into uh, Firefly, uh, What Makes Us Mighty. I'm like past couple years like every when these come out they're always on my list because they're always so good and they're all you know actually feel like episodes of the show so I always mm -hmm. make it yes. my number three is another trilogy lots of trilogies this one this is the first book in the series black unicorn by Tanith Lee really fun fantasy series and just from that time and they're very short which is weird mm -hmm. all of them are pretty short which is a very strange thing for fantasy like that, but just a really fun, exciting. Yeah, all those read. like 70s, 80s, 90s fantasy. That's like yes. prime for that. Uh, my number two is the other Fire Father book came out uh, this past year, Carnival. I like that a little bit more. Well, it makes us mighty, so push it one slot higher. My number two, something that you just started reading. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the Hell's Moon Castle trilogy. Um, I have read the original, but I did not read the sequels and companion um really fun i love this more than the movie which i know is a point of contention yeah we disagree after i because i've read the first one now how is how Castle. is how is a much better character they're very this? they're very different it's a completely different, different person the but movie. Yeah. i think this Hal is so much more consistent and so much better for sophie and i love sophie so much more because she is sassy in this but not so much in the movie but great series i loved it i thought it was a fun read yeah my number one um, is actually a very recent Star Trek book, which is mm -hmm. unusual, but Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Revenant by Alex White. Um, and this is one that, again, I feel the voice of it feels very true to the show. I enjoy anything dealing with Dax and the Tri and Trill Society and really getting into how that functions and the symbiotes and um, anything involving that. I really, really enjoy it. And this was very well written. This is one of the best Star Trek books I've read in years. Uh, so definitely an exciting one that that came out recently. And my number one is Firefly. Both of these are yep. great. This one definitely was not the strongest one. This was fantastic. Yeah, we both liked them. Yeah, yeah that, that one more. But these are just amazing. And I, every time one comes out, there's another one scheduled for June. June, yep. And just it's like a gift. It's yeah. like it's like a, a magical gift. This one was very disappointing because when I got this, this is actually the second one we got. Oh yeah, that was one the, of the yeah. The spine was actually broken yeah, the and pages was bad. were yeah. coming out of it. 
so we had to order a second one. And this, it's really sad because it's completely different. Like it doesn't have the feelies here. Well, the first few, the paper quality the was better on the inside first few, too. The, the binding was much better. Mm -hmm. They had like the little bookmark yeah. ribbons. The, like, this, this like inside prettiness. Like it just, they were made much nicer. And the last one that came out is a lot cheaper. Um, so I'm hoping that doesn't continue with yeah. the next one that comes out. But but at least the quality of the writing is maintained because I felt like after a while, like they were going to start feeling like not. To me, yeah. this one wasn't as good writing wise, but I I'm just so happy. These are like just such a gift, and I'm yeah. just so happy. That they still, we have they still feel like episodes of the show. Like they're written. Like it's a, they're, there's a couple of things we talked about. Like it's it's hard. Like for these to be successful, it has to feel like the tone of the show to work. The voice of it, and it's hard to do. So. Yeah, and they I will. think these were episodes that they were planning on doing. They kind of feel like, yeah. I really enjoyed them. All right, so we'd love to hear what some of your favorite books were that you read this year.